Hi everyone. So I figured that for this video, I'll be joined by Jacob. You might recognize from when we reacted to the Magic Railroad parody. Uh, so today, what I figured we would do is with the official PT Boomer scenes out on the Spillray and leaked work run and stuff, it'd be sort of neat to compare the official scenes with different fan made recreations of those scenes. First, you'll see a scene from something called the Brin Cut, which was like a early fan edit attempt for the film, which just used still pictures and stuff. Okay. And you'll see uh, my version of the scene, which was from Ghost Raiders and Witches' Towers the Magic Railroad. That will mostly be against this blue screen, but I've edited in the voices from other recordings. Okay. Uh, and then finally, you'll see either the scene as seen in the work from the Blu-ray or from a fan-made restoration of one of those scenes, because both the Blu-ray and work print footage is a little rough as far as the effects go. Gotcha. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And then afterward, we'll compare and review your see which you know, like best. Sweet. So let's start. <laughs> in the stupid valley on this stupid railroad! Hope you're looking for some time. <laughs> now regret not listening to me, because I, P.T. Boomer, I'm going to destroy Shining Time Station and Burnett Stone along with it! That swine, that fool, he still dash away from me! With that stupid engine! Yes! That stupid, stupid engine! Now, what was its name? Lundy? Loddy? Lady? Yes! Tasha should have been mine! But it was that... Brunner and his silly, stupid little engine that stole away from me! Tasha has always been mine. She was mine until Bernard Stone moved to the area and found this silly little engine in the mountain, and he stole Tasha away from me. He even took her to the school dance. He'll live to regret that day, but I have my revenge. I thought that I had destroyed Lady when I took her for a little test drive. Obviously, I was wrong. After hearing rumors that she had survived the crash, I have searched high and low for her. I am convincing that if I destroy her and remove Barnett, Shining Time will fall and I will have my ultimate revenge! I will find Lady and destroy her. I will ruin Barnett Stone and wipe this miserable, stupid little Shining Time station off the map! Now where to find this stupid engine? First stop, the village. Someone must be able to guide me to Burnett Stone and his bridge. 
Nothing, lady. I will find them. The resource will go! Oh, that's it. You gotta get yourself killed. Fine work, Patch. That train whistle sooner than it hears itself. So sooner than it hears itself. Come on. Son, Mr. Two Feathers, I heard your brakes go on. Everything's okay, Patch. Just a crazy guy on a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, so what, what did you think of those scenes? Well, the like first two looked like they were recorded on a potato, but that's probably because <laughs> of the year. I don't know. Yeah, uh, the the print cut was released, I think, in uh, 2010, but he was going to upload it to YouTube, and I and the version I downloaded was back when they used Flash Player. Oh, so that's okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Look for me. As for Money Scene, I, I also pulled it from a YouTube rep much later, though. Okay. Uh, so it was probably a re recording of a re recording. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Was it Burnett Stone, the motorcycle guy? No. Burnett Stone is the. Is the person Boomer is rivaling with PT Boomer was the one on the motorcycle? Boomer, okay, yeah. Uh, right. In the period, he was the one on the scooter. Got you. Okay, yeah. He was a little over the top in the first one. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, the voice actor was like mm -hmm. full into it. He was channeling uh, the evil, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and the print cut, the first one was yeah. uh, sourced information just straight from. Solar Island fan synergy and look at any of the original scripts. Oh, yeah. So he just wrote his own scene. Gotcha. Um, it's my, I, I mostly relied on the May 19th script. Yeah. It was a later version that added some more scenes. So 
I wrote the scenes that weren't in the May 19th script. Okay. Uh, and that was one of the scenes that weren't is it in the May 19th script. So, got you. Uh, and if you notice, he mentioned Harry Copper. That's referring to something that happened in Shining Time Station, if you recall, way back in the first season. Okay. And before Billy was there, there was another engineer, Harry Copper. Okay. And then he, then he left the seri- series after the first season, and so they brought a new engineer, Billy Two Brothers. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so I thought it would be so little interesting to tie that in. Nice little, yeah, little ode to him. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then obviously the official one just had the action of him cutting in front of the rainbow so I'm not wrote out of any sort. Yeah, the last one was the official one, right? Yeah. The first one was some kid in his living room, like letting it go. And who did the one with the the, the birds or bats, whatever that one was? That one was mine. There you go. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. They should add more birds. Should always be birds. Uh, I think there was originally going to be birds, but they probably going to add it later in post. They just never got around to it, at least for yeah. this version. Gotcha. So all of the three versions of Treasure, do you think you like best? Which one I like best? Mm-hmm. Probably the one that didn't look have the South Park cut of him on the motorcycle, like. Pew, 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 pew. So which one is that? The the final cut. Oh, the actual one. Yeah. That first one was awful. Yeah. Like that was just over the top. But Mr. Fonda's acting like way in the background. Amazing Fonda. It was. No, P.T. Boone was played by Doug Lennox. Bernard Stone I was know. played by Peter Fonda. That's what I'm saying. He put Fonda's overacting to shame. Oh. Because <laughs> he was pretty intense on that character. Like he was paid like 10000 and he gave like $100,000 worth of acting. He just went overboard. It's like it's a TV show for kids. Take it easy. You say at PT Boomer was like over the top in what was it, the Brent cut? That was a Brent cut, yeah. Yeah. I think that's just because he was young mm-hmm. and he was just really, really trying to get it. Mm-hmm. That's uh, the official one you like best. Yes. I'm, I'm sort of torn between mine and the official one because I like that little ode to Harry Cover. Harry Cover, yeah. 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 I'm not that, I don't, I don't have like the, the nostalgic knowledge of it, so mm-hmm. I don't know. It doesn't connect with me on that level. Sure. So, so let's go on to the next scene. Burnett Stone ever give you a smile? No, but he doesn't frighten my horse either. Which means I don't think he's a bad man. I think he's just sad. Oi, you, Billy! I need to talk to you. Oh, it's you. Why have you come back here? We don't like your tank around here. I've come back to finish my job, to destroy the lost tension. I've seen her before, and I'm here to find her. I'm not going to do anything to help you, so you might as well go away now. The sooner I find the lost tension, the sooner you can be rid of me. Just tell her where she is, Billy! Fine, be that way! I'll still find her and punish you! I didn't know that in Muffle Mountain there was a secret that Burnett had shared only with his childhood friend, Tasha. I'll show you, retired Harry. Billy Two Feathers doesn't seem like the one to help me out. Billy Two Feathers. Do you know who I am? Or P.T. Boomer, and you left this valley when I was little. So now I'm back with a question. Where's Burnett Stone? Wherever he wants to be. Playing innocent like the rest of this valley. It won't work. I'll find him. Yes, 
there is innocence here. Don't mess with it. It's here because this town's built on somewhere special. And it is touched by gold dust too. That combination equals harmony. And you wouldn't understand that if it was staring you in the face. This iron horse of mine serves me proud. But you two can cover every nook and cranny. If you see a stranger when you're out there riding, will you let me know, Patch? Oh, sure I will. His name is Boomer. You're Billy Two Feathers. You know who I am? You're P.T. Boomer. You left this valley a long time ago when I first became a railroader. Well, now I'm back. Two reasons. You see that mountain over there? I'm going to own it. It's going to be mine. All mine. That mountain's not for sale. It belongs to Mother Earth. You'll never own it. A second reason I'm back, I'm looking for Burnett Stone. Where is he? Wherever he wants to be. Playing innocent like everyone else in this town won't work. I'll find him. Yes, there is innocence here. Don't mess with it. is here because this valley is built on land that's special and it's touched by gold dust too that combination equals harmony but you can't understand that even when it's staring you in the face so then was in the scene who would you think well the I'm guessing the one you did and the one, the final one, they're pretty much, they're, they're pretty similar. Yeah. <clears throat> the Brent cut, that's like, he's full on, he, that, that's his boomer and I'm okay with that. He likes that. That's good. Super evil, over the top boomer. Awesome. But yeah, your scene and the original or the, the final scene seem pretty similar. Yeah, because that scene was in the script, it, the May 19th script. Oh, so you just, okay. The, the only thing that was change was the mention of 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 harry retiring because again there was a nod to okay uh, yeah so yeah uh, but the scene that was filmed later on was rehearsing and only the drafts so there was more dialogue obviously okay yeah mm. that was awesome mm. why is boomer such a jerk though uh, I, th I think it's just because he's they need the bad guy they need a the bad guy i know um, uh, I well, I was going to say something about, like, oh, he's just he's jealous of Bernard's relationship with his wife and that motivated them to destroy it, and now he's just bent on revenge. He just needs some Jesus. <laughs> so, out of those, which do you like best? Well, like I said, yours and the final scene are pretty much, like, really similar, so, like, either one of those could go. The Brent, I don't think I'm going to be a fan of any of the Brent scenes. I'll laugh at them. They're pretty funny, but like I'm okay. I'm not gonna pick the that one over any of them if they're if the other ones are gonna be on par with the first two, probably not. And that probably go with the official one. Mainly mainly because from the official one on that later script revision, yeah. There seems to be a bit more of an edge to Boomer. Like he's in the nineteenth script, he's just someone who doesn't believe in magic and that's it. Yeah. Whereas in the in the later script revision in what was filmed, that he still didn't believe in magic, but he also put his faith in money into so that. An extra layer of complexity to the character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's how you go with the official one. The lot of spite here. Makes sense. Yeah. So, next scene. <laughs> Now it's 
Gee, I hate it when you do that. <laughs> Muffle Mountain Farm. Well, hello, Mr. Conductor. Oh, hello, Billy. I'll show him wherever he wants to be. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the Indian Valley Gazette has all newspapers for delivery right here. If Burnett Stone is a subscriber, I bet I can find his address here. It's got to be here somewhere. Come on, where is it? Hey, what are you doing with my papers? Uh, mind your own beeswax. Besides, don't you have something better to do? Yeah, delivering the papers that are now all over the place. My boss is going to be super angry with me. Pish posh. There's no way he's... Aha! Found it. Burnett Stone, 255 Victor Lane. Muffle Mountain. Bingo. Thanks. Have a nice day. But, man, I'm in trouble now. And action. Hey, what are you doing with my papers? Hey, mind your own beeswax. Besides, don't you have something better to do? Yeah, I deliver these papers all over the place. My boss is going to be really mad at me. I'm in trouble now. Ah, uh, pish posh. There's no way he's... Aha! Found it. Burnett Stone, 255 Victor Lane, Muffle Mountain. Bingo! Thanks, and have a nice day. Boy, I'm in trouble now. But Mutt sensed trouble, and that just like diesel on Sodor, Boomer was the cause of it here in the valley. Burnett Stone, Muffle Mountain. So, what do we think of those things? Brent cut, same as last time, over the top, not my thing. Uh, the final one, there was like no legitimate address, just yeah. the mountain. And yeah. then he just like, yes, he's on a mountain. I'm going to go find him. And then the kid comes, picks up the paper, and he's like, oh, I'm going to follow the child. Like, a little odd. So, I, I think I'd pick your scene over that one. It was a legitimate address. The kid actually, there was some interaction between the characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not the old man following a kid. It's a little weird. Yeah. Just trying to find a guy on a mountain. Mm -hmm. Random noises. I actually agree with you. Uh, so, yeah, the the bin trap is it's it's its own thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like separate from like if you want to laugh. I'm assuming like sure watch it, but like comparing it to like these two, mm -hmm. I don't think it really compares. No, uh, yeah, I like so. Official version, like there was no address. I didn't even think of it. I'm following the kid about, but maybe just like Muffle Mountain, but it's a big mountain, I would think. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it's a mountain, right? Not a hill. So, yeah. well, it's not supposed to be like a big, big mountain, but it's also not supposed to be like a hill. Either. Yeah. So, I don't know how he's coming out of that down. So, uh, as for me, there was an actual address. Yeah, yeah. It, it made it more believable, just a little bit more believable, mm. not like out there. It, it can relate to an older audience, I guess. Like if you're 10 and under, not paying attention, like, oh, you found it. Like, sure. But if like you're older watching it, like, no, nah, I need an address. Like you go find someone on a mountain. I don't know how you do that without an address. Mm. Uh, probably would pick my, the first one, not the earlier take though. Yeah. The first one was better. Mm. It was, the angle was better. Routine. So, in agreement, let's look at the next scene. Gotcha.
I just don't seem to understand about about magic. Hello again, my friend. Boom. What's on earth are you doing here? I've come to find you. I want you to tell me where that lost engine lady is. Why do you want to know? So that I can finish what I started. You mean destroy her? I won't let that happen, Boomer. I won't help you. You are only delaying the inevitable. I will find her and I will destroy her! It was a mistake trusting you before, and I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Just tell me where she is, and I'll leave you alone. She won't be much use to na you now. Oh, Rusty, I bet she doesn't even work. I'm afraid I can't help you, Boomer. Now you better leave, it's getting dark. This is the end of this. I will find her, and I will destroy her! Then I will stop you. This is where Burnett's granddaughter, Lily, comes into our story. So I found you again, Burnett Stone. And you finally returned, as I always knew you would. So where's that engine? I'll never tell you that. You're far too filled with hate for her and for this valley. No, I'm not. I just think magic means nothing. I'll be back, Burnett Stone. I found you, and I'll find her. So we meet again, Burnett Stone. Aren't you surprised to see me? Not really. I knew you'd come back someday, Boomer. Where's that engine? I'll never tell you. You should know that. And I'm just gonna have to level this mountain. And why not? After all, skyscrapers and parking lots make money. Not magic. Now you see, it's money that makes you happy. Magic can make a man unhappy. Don't you agree? I mean, look what it's done to you, Burnett. <laughs> Who needs it? Oh, not you. Not me. I'll be back, Burnett Stone! I found you! Now I'm gonna find that engine. They need to go, they need to go close things. I don't know. They're both like really close. Mm -hmm. With with the Brunch you can tell it's gonna be the same guy for all the voices. Yeah. You can get tiring with that after a while. Yeah. Like I'm 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 not talking about the I'm not a Brent Cut fan. Mm -hmm. it, it's no no. And but you'll notice like the way I sort of blocked the scene, it was clearly inspired by how that scene was framed in the Brent Cut. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna remember, I only have the script to go off of. I had no idea what the final version was going to look like. Yeah. 
you yeah. took your reference from the Brent cut, transferred it to the script. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> then as for the official version, official list, because as you saw, there was added some DHNet visual effects to it, yeah. because there's the version on the Blu ray. Uh, it, you can tell it was filmed during the day. And they, and they just transferred it tonight. Yeah. Just filter over it, I'm assuming. Well, uh, I did the filter. Yeah. And because there's just the actual day footage on the Blu ray. Okay. So, well, I, th I think I'd again go with the official version only to that same sort of edge that was on display that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Just a little more in depth, more uh, filling, I guess, to it. Yeah. You are right. And what did you think of the day-to-night -day visual effects? It was okay. Yeah. You can tell it was like early on your skills, like very early. The mountain, it changed to the mountain. You can see where you had to like yeah. manually apply the filter on the mountain. Yeah. But yeah. I suppose if I had more time, I could probably get yeah, yeah. it a lot closer. Than... Yeah. It was just early works. Everyone uh, progresses. The baby. Well, anyway, let's go into the next scene. Mutt was feeling pleased with himself. He had put Lily on the wrong train, but he knew he had done so for the right reasons. Hello, yes, I was just wondering whether you could tell me anything about an engine called Lady. Yes, y Lady. She was working in an area of shining time. Yeah, that's shining as it's usually spelt. No records, so you joking? I'm not percent sure she was there. I travelled on her once. Check again for me, please. Still no records? Okay, thank you. Bye. Right, I'm going to find that engine eventually. Hello, is this Digger's Hotline? Yes. How can I help you, sir? Well, is it safe to take around Muffle Mountain? Well, there are a lot of places on Muffle Mountain where there are underground gas lines. Like around Victor Lane, for example. Everywhere on Victor Lane? No, not everywhere. Which block were you looking at? Uh, the 200th block. You should be safe to dig on that block. What about in the mountain itself? That should be safe too. But just be careful. I'm always careful. You wouldn't see me falling over a viaduct anytime soon. If you say so. Anyway, do you need anything else? Just a prized possession. That's what I'm digging for. Not really anything else, no. Have a nice day, sir. You too. I want my money back. No. Lily wasn't on the Muffle Mountain train, and this one goes straight to Shining Time. Yes, Daisy. Well, let me know if you see her. I, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. I'd appreciate it. As Burnett Stone walks down the platform, we turn to find Boomer in the telephone booth, examining the train schedule that Burnett has left there. Boomer smiles sardonically as he meticulously shreds the schedule, scattering its pieces across the platform. Okay, so, 
Okay, what was that last part? Uh, that's another that that I need to explain. So that was there was a spot in the in the later version of the script that mentioned rumor going through uh the the schedule like that guy said. Yeah. But I don't know if it just wasn't filmed or if it just was not included on the Blu-ray for whatever reason, but okay. maybe that footage itself hasn't surfaced. All right. So so that one's sort of out of contention just uh but to sort of fill in the gap, uh I what I did was there was a twentieth anniversary presentation by Rainbow Sun Productions. Gotcha. Um uh, that that was that was like two years ago at this point. So what they did was they it was a staged aged uh what's it called table read. Gotcha. And that's just in the height of COVID to so everyone was filming from home mostly. Yeah. And that makes sense. And and so I just pulled all that that clip from that stage reading and then sort of overlaid that boomers clip is boomers that actually seen in that reading. Oh, at, that. From, at least from that part. It's just the guy in there reading. So I figured I'd put that in just to sort of so I looked like in that staged reading. Okay. That's sort of the story with with that part. Okay. So with the other two, the brain cut in my the brain cut in yours? Yeah. Well yours. Brain cut off. Ignore that. Well, let me make you get you to change your mind with this. Mm -hmm. Because I would go with the brain cut for one reason, one reason only. Why? I think it's a tad more realistic as far as the real world goes. How so? Uh, so you gotta remember, I was reading this when I was in between my first one of sophomore year in high school. Yeah, and I guess the day of calling Diggers Hotline came to the kept seeing those PSA, you know, oh, for the Diggers and, Hotline. Uh, and you were like, "That's a brilliant way to find it. We're gonna look for gas lines." Uh, and so, uh, and so that, that little bit, like. I now I know like if I was to dig and I wanted to do this hotline, I'd probably have to go to the location where I wanted to dig and set up the like, so they didn't actually yep. hit anything. Yeah. Whereas this is just an agent saying you should be fine to dig. No worries. You should have you should have showed them going on Google looking for railroad tracks on GPS map. <laughs> just search the yeah. entire mountain for railroad tracks. I would have been a tad more realistic than that, so Whereas in the grin to the sim calling to see if we can probably need some railroad database like on the other public area. records. Yeah. I guess you're right. Uh, I'm just a little biased. I dislike the South Park. The South Park cut. <laughs> That's what you're calling it? The South yep, Park that cut. Is the South Park cut. One hundred percent. It sounds just like carving. <laughs> so let's I choose yours, you choose the brain cut. Yeah. So now let's go into the next scene. How could I possibly say that I'm really useful now? Bernard would have hidden that engine close to his house, where he could access it easily. Muffle Mountain would be the perfect hideout. She's got to be out here. Ha ha! There's that silly too, Feathers White, and Patchwork Pony Lover. I wonder what they're up to. Maybe they're on Burnett's plan. Maybe they can lead me to Burnett Stone's secret hideout. Or perhaps they're just collecting herbs. I will find her. I will. Somewhere in the mountain. I NOT! That's the stranger. I'd better tell Billy. Mr. Two Feathers, I've seen the stranger and he looks like he's trying to find something inside the mountain. Thank you for telling me, Patch. I'm sorry your horse was frightened. 
What's this stranger looking for, Mr. Two Feathers? His name is Boomer. He was here once before, a long time ago. He wants to settle an old fight with Burnett Stone. I think it's about an engine. I think that's what he's looking for. Could the engine have something to do with the shadowy lines on your map? It's possible, and if that's true, then I think it's helped make this valley beautiful. Mr. Two Feathers, why are no flowers growing in the middle of this meadow? I've never noticed that before. Those lines almost look like a railroad track, but maybe it's just the light playing tricks. Maybe. Where is the windmill? And what is the clue? <laughs> Ready? I'll get it! Watch me! <laughs> no man is gonna stop Homer! Here I go now! That's the stranger. I better tell Billy. Your map. I found it lying on the platform. Be careful. I think that Boomer might find it useful. Mr. Two Feathers! I've seen the stranger and he looks like he's trying to destroy the mountain. He frightened my horse. Thank you for telling me, Patch. What's Boomer looking for, Mr. Two Feathers? He wants to settle an old fight with Burnett Stone. I think it's about an engine. And I think that's what he's looking for. Could the engine have something to do with the shadowy lines on your map? Yes, she could. And... She could have something to do with why this has always been such a peaceful homeland. Mr. Two Feathers, why are there no flowers growing in the middle of this meadow? I've never noticed that before. If we knew the answer to that question, Patch, we'd understand the mystery of this valley. Those lines almost look like the lines on your map. But maybe it's just the light playing tricks. Maybe. Well, Patch, this valley is suffering and a way has to be found to make it better again. Otherwise, Boomer's gonna make a bad situation worse. He likes to exploit the vulnerable. Bye, Mr. Two Feathers. Okay, so, okay, the Brent cut. I don't know where, like, where the kid came up with that term, but I don't know. It seems like a slur. I don't know if it is. He, he called he he called him a patchwork pony lover like that's got to be a slur like it feels like a slur mm. patchwork pony lover like that's just awful mm. like i don't I, I don't know it's just wrong that was off i'm probably just overthinking it but that that seemed like just call me something bad like that was that was too creative like he's heard that from somewhere else that's awful i'm probably just a little too sensitive about that though being that i i don't know i'm not native american mm. but uh I don't know your scene and the the final scene the final scene has a little more dialogue it seems like yeah. just makes it a little more in depth adds a little more to the story mm -hmm. so i choose that one i i think it's the same as far as the the, the print cut and why the scene was so different compared to the other ones yeah they said he pulled the information from a fan site at the time probably pulled it off 
it, it was mistyped something because it made it sound like Boomer was spying on Pac rather than all the way around. Yeah. And so they probably pulled it out before they corrected it. That's where it came from, the internet. The source of all issues. <laughs> you really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? I just mean that some of the details. Oh, I never thought of that. God darn it. So, Ron, well, I would agree that the official one's probably better. Yeah. games of me, Bonner, as it happens. No. No. No! It is you, Barnett, that should not play games with me! Tell me where she is, and I'll leave you alone! I'm afraid I can't do that. I have my duty to protect her. You'll never get your hands on her. Oh, but I'm afraid I will. I know she is out there somewhere in that mountain, and even if I have to blow it apart beast by piece, to find her, I will! Good luck with that then, but for now, I'll leave you, because I have a granddaughter to entertain. Tell where she is, Burnett, I will find her! I'll give you some directions. Go away, and never come back. Find me that way. <sighs> I'll still find the lost stranger eventually! I will find her, and I will destroy her! Destroy her! Hello, Burnett. Stacy. She's in the mountain, isn't she? Even if she were, she'd be no good to you now. You're a liar, Burnett Stone. A liar! Stacy, did you know my grandma? My mother did. She said Tasha was a wonderful dancer. And Billy says that Burnett was once the finest railroad engineer in the valley. I think Grandpa liked to call Grandma Lady. Lady? Yes, I heard him say that name. Well, my mother said your grandpa certainly had three passions in his life. Tasha, trains, and this valley. That, uh, engine. She's in that mountain, isn't she? Even if she were, she'd be no good to you now. Uh, you're wrong, Burnett Stone. Just like you're always wrong. I'll tell you what she's good for. <laughs> and one thing only. I'm gonna tell you what that is. <laughs> she's good for scrap. <laughs> I wish. Oh. Who's that man with Grandpa? A man who doesn't like beauty. Lily, can I borrow this photograph? I promise I'll take care of it. Okay. Hello, Burnett. Stacy. Now, I gotta go with the final scene. It's just like a little more to it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, we'll say, though, that the revised script from August that Laura used to shoot. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it seems like what was filmed actually drew out what was written a lot more. Okay. Because it, the way her talk script, the way it was written, is that. That line simply was, you're wrong, Burnett Stone. She's good for one thing, scrap. And that was it. And yeah. Was, so then drew it out for whatever reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why either. But it is what it is. Yeah. I still would go with the episode version. Agreed. Me so.
Deve que sim. This isn't working. <laughs> I know what's in here. Come on, let's dig this thing down. Come on, machine, try that thing. <laughs> No man is gonna stop Boomer! <laughs> but, uh, I'll get it! Watch it, me! I take it back, that was full brain cut energy right there. Like he was he was digging in that mountain with some fervor. Like he was going at it. That was that was pretty intense. Uh, I'm super happy. He's gonna be digging in that mountain forever with that tiny <laughs> thing. No. He's gonna die before he finishes digging in that mountain. That's hilarious. Yeah. So you you made that guy dig with that hand shovel for a while. Like no. he, he, <laughs> He was going at it for a while too. That was, that was hilarious. Uh, uh, I missed it's not working. Yeah. So, so like I said, it says it wasn't the switch on the Francis. That's why there was no green cut. Yeah. Version. But out of the two versions of the thing, which do you think was best? I don't know. I think yours, maybe. I don't know. They both got like the same kind of energy. So yours, he's just like, he's just like, man, it's, he's just done. He's like, yeah, I don't know. This ain't working. The other one, he's like just having a blast, yeah. got himself a nice little digger, and he's just going at it. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends if you want like a, uh, like he's he's fed up and tired of it, or if he's just like super enthusiastic and he's he's found his purpose in life digging. Yeah. Like, it just depends on your viewpoint, I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, so hard to tell <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I mean, either one yeah. depends on how you feel that day, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so, let's uh, continue. So I need to talk to you. Oh, it's you. What do you want? If there's anything to do with the lost engine, then you might as well go away now. No, no. You see, I won't leave you alone until I find her. I know she's somewhere in the mountain. Somewhere I can hear her. Well, good luck with the searching on the whole of Muffle Mountain. But if you find her, it's not if I find her, it's when I find her. Boomer, you are not going to find her. Now, if you don't mind, I have a train to drive. And in that case, I too have work to do. To find a lost engine. Ah, the difference between our jobs then is I'm going to be successful and you are not. Just you wait and see. Just you wait and see. It looks like there's a storm coming. We've been safe from storms in this valley for a long while. Let's hope this one is just passing through like yourself. Easy, Cooper. I am passing through. Right through into that mountain and then OOF! No more protector. No more precious engine. There's no such thing as magic. I have some 
errands to do, but I'll meet you back here in time for sunset. Thank you, Patch. We're following some shadowy lines I've seen on a map. They're like railroad tracks without any rails. But if they are railroad tracks, they must be magic ones. But why did they suddenly stop? I don't know. Don't worry, Patch. I'll look after him. There's a big storm coming. We've been safe from storms in this valley for a long while. Let's hope this one's just passing through. Like yourself, P.T. Boomer. I am passing through. Right on through into that mountain. Then... Boom! <laughs> no more engine. No protector. No more mountain of rocks. <clears throat> Just a... Uh... <laughs> money. That mountain won't change. You can survive anything, Boomer. Including yourself! Hey, I have to go to the store and get some things. I think I'll stay around here. Oh, that's okay. I've also got a bunch of errands to do, so I'll meet you back here in time for sunset. Thanks. That one, the burnt cut wasn't that bad. Like it was, it actually like lent itself to the scene. Like it wasn't too bad. Not my thing though, but I don't know. I think. The final scene, very slim, uh, was like the the one I felt I more resonated with. Oh, uh, same. Uh, really close back to the edge than I talked about. Yeah, like there's just a little more complexity to it. it makes itself stand out a little more. So, and if you're wondering what the green screen was, that's what... Yeah. Uh, so, I actually tried back to Madrid, apparently, the plan was to sort of key in uh, the view of the mountain. Okay. Sort of demonstrate Boomer as a threat to the mountain. Just setting it up behind him. Gotcha. Right. So I thought it was going to be something like that. Either a storm cloud or a mountain something. Right. Okay. So we're getting close to the end. Here's the next scene. We'll find her. Don't worry. Hello, Patch! I need your help to find Ross Dungeon! Get away from me, Boomer! I'm not gonna help you! Eventually, if no one will tell me where she is, I'll just have to blast her out with some 
explosions. <laughs> I am brave. I am brave. Thomas says I'm brave, so I'm brave. You never hear wrong, do you? Now where exactly did you hear it? Don't worry. Mr. Stone? I've heard an engine's whistle on this mountain. You heard wrong, Patch. Well, I mean, I'd be too deaf to hear. But Lily said you heard a dog bark. You never hear wrong, do you? Now, where exactly did you hear that whistle? I don't talk with bullies, Boomer. <laughs> well, everybody has their price. Now, what's yours? I think of all you could buy with this. Forget it, Boomer! You'll never catch us! That boy was about to sell him out. He seen the money, and he paused. He seen the look on his face. He was going to go for the money. It's awful. The final scene, though. Is, is better, the final one. Yeah, well, if you can tell, the original script mentioned Pat running to, trying to get away on this wasn't succeeding. Yeah. That's why, in my vision, he was sort of trying to reach out and grabbing him. Yeah. Family. Yeah, that's what I kind of figured was going on. He's chasing him down on the motorcycle while he's riding on the horse. Uh, and, yeah. And I don't know if it was just logistics of trying to get the horse there, or some animal safety issue. But they, I guess they just decided against it or couldn't. Uh, the horse just wasn't present for the shoot. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think I would, uh, I'd still go give it to the final version. Yeah. Like the scene. Revenge, Burnett Stone. <laughs> you and that engine. You know what revenge sounds like. Honestly, it was a toss up between the Brent cut and the final cut. I don't think your scene had enough, wasn't fleshed out enough. Oh, well. To be fair, in the main anti script is usually where I where it's one off of. Yeah. So it didn't have any dialogue of any kind for that scene. So it's just him setting up the explosion. Yeah. Gotcha. And, yeah. I suppose it did look like it was Black Little Bunny, basically. Yeah. Remember the moment he touched you in the wrong back roots. Yeah. I was like, oh no. Like it just all went wrong. <laughs> He's on the mountain <laughs> behind Thomas and. 
<laughs> like the mm-hmm. invisible wall or he bouncing off a tree limb and no more boomer. <laughs> boomer went boom and <laughs> bye bye boomer. Thomas is going on the right like no tracks. Doesn't know where his life is heading, just mm-hmm. down the side of a mountain with a mm-hmm. pink splash of what used to be Boomer on his back. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can agree on that one. Okay. <laughs> For me, because I'll find your lost dungeon. Booking in that last one. Mm-hmm. Jumped off the bike. Yeah, that was right. that's hilarious. Right. So, to be fair, the the official version of King Trump was from a fan that, that I put together using the official footage. Okay. Yeah, because the because uh Blu ray didn't really have any footage to work print though did, but it was very incomplete. Like like the footage in the work print just had we were riding his motorcycle while I assume like some sort of ATV or some sort of real prop. Okay. It was standing in for Thomas, filling the area with smoke, the smoke machine. Gotcha. So he just jumped off the motorcycle ran and dove into the ground. Okay. So I posited the shots together. Oh, okay. I think I remember you mentioning that before. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And so that was the quote unquote official version. Um, official yeah. gotcha yep and so I guess if you can remember what what which what do you think was best the final one the final one uh, and this is the last scene okay <laughs> This must be another branch of the Magic Railroad. Just wait until I tell Percy. Meanwhile, 
I'd like to get rid of this really nasty passenger. This must be another branch of the Magic Railroad. Wait until I tell Percy. Meanwhile, I need to get away from this nasty passenger. Now that last one was a little bit of a missed tone because there really isn't an official version. Yeah. And don't look at what Trent and at least what is shown all over. It just goes from the time I said in the portal straight to Bananas Workshop. Right? So, I don't know. Yep. Yeah. That, that's all. I, I, that's basically put in a, a recreation that I made for Twitter. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, I like the final one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, it is sort of hard to, uh, to sort of. Switch after in the middle of a movie, that yeah. Makes sense, yeah. I mean, did sort of pull up with the explanation, so so yeah, that makes sense. Roughly, well, well, you uh, have more surprise for our viewers, and um, we'll see that soon. Sweet. Reach for the speed. Reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. So much to see. So far to travel, so much to learn to know. Friends by your side, hopes to hold on to. Who knows how far you? Congratulations to everyone who's made it to this point in the video. Now, as an extra thanks for making it through all our comparisons, I figured I would show you a extended version of the chase scene from Thomas the Magic Girl, the Lost Edition, the fan edit that I made. Uh, certainly after putting together the final uh, version, I, had, I decided maybe there's a way we can combine like all the extra scenes from the different versions of the two scene, the leaked work print, the, then the 2009 chase scene that leaked, and the final version. So, Without further ado, here that is. Lily, I'm back. Oh, Thomas, I'm so sorry I had to leave you behind. Aha! There's the blue buffalo! And look who we win! Splodge! Come and destroy! No, no, you, you do it yourself. We never like you. Yeah, we mean that. Exactly. Yeah, what is that? Mean? I have no idea. Good word. Ah! Oh, 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 I'm after that engine! Ooh. Ah, who needs you, Splodge? Run, lady, quickly! And I'm going to help you! So am I, my lady. I'll not let you down again. Watch out for the viaduct, it's dangerous! What's the matter? Lady. That engine's name is Lady. She's part of the clue to the source of the gold dust! Ah! Ow! I'll get you, Burnett Stone! Yes! No, you won't, Boomer. Because the magic you refuse to believe in will get the better of you. You can run, but you can't hide! I like my lunch, Steve! <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, Bernat! <laughs> the clothes are off! Pretty fast for a puffball. <laughs> Your shining time too. I hope so. Come on, lady. Little engines can do big things. Here for a cruise. <laughs> but well, Mr. Conductor, you still don't have your gold dust. Hope to hold on to who knows how far you go. To a shining time station where dreams can come true. Your own imagination waiting there. So I guess if you had to give me an overall impression, or I suppose like three versions of what, what, would you, what would you say? <laughs> Brent Cut, if you need a laugh, watch it. Yours and the final version, there, there are some areas where your version I, I enjoy better. It adds a little more complexity to the story, but then there's versions from the final version that they, they do well on, but then there are sections where they don't, and that gives your version its time to shine. So, I mean, awesome. so, if like we could piece in yours, your 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 set of ideas into their set of ideas, I think it'd make it more cohesive movie. No, I think it is some parts like one of the version I love what types of a do like. Yeah, yeah. And so thanks for joining me and Jacob for this. No problem. Anytime. And so thanks for watching. Uh please like comment and subscribe and I'll see you later. Let yourself take flight. And your fall won't be tragic Feel your heart beat now So please don't live in static You don't have to